Hello. In part one, I told you how the large man and small woman had started harassing me because I had not allowed them to widen their drive by stealing a one and a half metre wide strip of my front lawn. The harassment initially had consisted of verbal abuse and having stuff sent to me through the post and by courier. In the middle of 2001, new next door neighbours to the west of my property arrived, a disabled man and a fat wife. It soon became apparent that the neighbours to the east had enlisted the support of these new neighbours. The large man's verbal abuse had started with the phrase, You're a little shit. Soon after the arrival of the new neighbours, when I was in my front garden, on two occasions, the loud-mouthed fat woman pointed me out to a visitor to her property and said, I'll give two more examples of the behaviour which reveal the character of these people. Our two properties have semi-detached garages, mine the green, there's the yellow on the plan. I wrote to my neighbours about the maintenance of these garages. The letter and envelope were pushed back through my letterbox with annotations. When these neighbours attached trellis to the back of my garage and grew climbers which were climbing into the roof space, I took the matter to court and had to deliver to my neighbours copies of documents that I had sent to the court. After doing so, I was confronted with the neighbours shouting at me across their garden fence. The disabled man started off, then the wife joined in. In 1999, the large man had only removed part of his fence from my property. On the 22nd of March 2002, a judge in the county court agreed that I could remove the rest of the fence. Part of it is seen here. After I had removed the fence, the large man attacked me. The first punch landed as I was in the place marked by the red disc on my lawn, and the punches continued as I retreated along the white dotted line until I was knocked to the ground in front of my garage door at the position marked by the blue disc. Following this attack, the investigating officer from Sussex Police would not allow me to sign a statement about it, because I would not agree to drop the matter. Instead, he filed a dishonest report in the Sussex Crime Reporting System. Here is part of that record. When I complained to Sussex Police about this dishonesty, they refused to record my complaint. In May 2002, I discovered that the large man was a retired policeman. I referred my complaint to the Independent Police Complaints Commission on the 2nd of September 2006 and still await any response from them more than eight months later. On the 7th of July 2003, the aim of the harassment became clear. The large man told me to put my property on the market and move out. On the 30th of October, I received a threatening telephone call with the same message and another on the 8th of January. Then, malicious telephone calls became another method of harassment. There were repeated calls in the middle of the night so that I had to unplug the telephone before going to bed. Other telephone calls originated from coupons filled in by my neighbours. For instance, I was supposed to have asked for my furniture to be measured for fitted covers, to be fitted with underwear, to secure a loan or buy insurance, and to have a new kitchen fitted. I'll end part two with another form of harassment in which the police were uninterested. I mentioned to a neighbour who was friendly with the large man my interest in satellite broadcasting. 
Four days later, on the 25th of June 2004, between midnight and 8.15 in the morning, the LNB and its bracket were stolen from the satellite dish in my back garden. This meant that I was deprived of satellite radio and television for six months. The small piece missing at the top of the fence, top right, was broken off at the time of the theft. In 2004, the harassment from neighbours, helped by Sussex police, was to reach a climax, which will be the subject of part three. Bye for now.